So you guys probably don't know this, but every so often, behind the scenes, as a YouTube creator, you get YouTube recommended videos. And every so often, I go and check out some ideas, because sometimes it's really, really cool. Now, um, a few days ago, I was recommended on making a video on how to make AI animation look more human. And he spiked my interest because it was a video that I thought, why am I getting recommended this video in the first place? And second, people must be searching for this term in order for them to actually be recommending me to make this video as an animation specialist. This tells me that there's something off with the way we're actually using AI especially in creative fields like animation and game making. So today I want to unpack how AI is not quite hitting the mark and why that human touch still matters, maybe now more than ever. So without further ado, let's get to it. Hello, my name is Harvey and uh, if you're new here, welcome. I talk about animation, game making and much, much more. And the idea of AI and animation, just like any other creative, is both exciting and terrifying in equal amounts. Now, I've made a few videos over the years about AI and creativity and all that stuff. And just from the get-go, I just want to tell you guys that I am not a diehard against AI and I think AI is terrible because AI has a purpose, is a tool, it's useful in so many ways and I'm fascinated to where we're gonna go with AI. So I am not against AI, however, I am against certain aspects of the fact of the AI talk right now because there is a lot of people out there that think that AI is going to replace everything and to me, like basically taking away the human side of our society in terms of creativity and a bunch of other things, it basically dehumanizes us as a people. And I do think that there is a place where both AI, humans and everything else can actually live together, coexist together for a better future for humanity. Now, I'm starting a little hardcore and tough, but this is my stance on AI, just so you guys understand, because on my last few videos that I had, there's always been comments about, oh, you don't understand AI and AI is going to take your job and why are you a naysayer and AI embrace the new reality because AI is going to take out over everything. And I don't think that nothing in life is as black and white as that, right? Things are always gray. And this is why I think I want to make this video about why people are searching for a term such as how to make AI look more human. Because I think there's a lot of depth to this question on people trying to use a tool that basically gives them a lot and I think it's innate with us as humans to actually try to do the most with the least amount of work. We, as I say many times in my animation to my animation students, humans are lazy by default, but not because it's in a bad way, it's just that we like to outsmart or outthink the problem in order to be able to solve it in the best way possible. Because doing it the hard way sucks every time. I'm with you, it's normal. So AI just feels like it's this new frontier that you can do so many things that you perhaps wouldn't be able to do it before and now you can do it with just a prompt and all of a sudden you have it, right? But I really don't think that it's all or nothing. Now, if people are searching for a term, how to make AI look more human, then it means that there is a limitation to where AI is actually hitting a ceiling and people are not seeing what they want to see in a specific animation. Now, in animation, from what I've seen of AI doing animation, like it's missing a lot of stuff and some of it is basic and some of it is actually a little bit more high level, but stiffness, lack of emotion, inabilities to surprises, that affectionate um, quality that a lot of Pixar and Disney animations have, um, those things are not there. But ultimately, any animation that you make, all you want as an entertainer, in, even in games, is to connect with an audience. And I do think that being a human to be able to actually create those things and pull on the feelings of the audience is a very intricate thing that basically it's it's multi-layered right and this is where we're falling short because 
the number one thing that we want as an audience, right, is to basically feel like we are being surprised. We are like going somewhere that we don't know exactly where it's going to end. So when you sit on that seat in the cinema and you're actually watching the latest movie and there's no surprise and then you get to the end and you see it coming and it comes and then you're like, great, this was horrible. And that's basically, you know, more of the same. And you've been on those much more than you most likely been in movies that basically surprised you or made you cry or really, really made you feel a certain way because those are far and few between. And there's a reason for that. That's because normally people that are behind those movies really care for every single aspect of every single you know, part of the movie to the point where they understand the audience super well, who's gonna watch it and basically how they're gonna feel about the end product. All of this sets up a scene on the limitations of AI as of right now. So after much research, and as I've been fascinated by this AI situation from the beginning, um, I found that what AI does as we probably know all at this point is that AI doesn't really invent, it replicates. And this is, I think, the crux of the problem that we have right now when it comes to people wanting the AI to basically surpass a certain limit that at this point in time cannot surpass it, right? It doesn't invent, it basically replicates. Now, I saw a video recently by Michael Woolbridge, which is an Oxford AI chair here in the UK. And he says, AI can't reason or create bespoke solutions. It builds from a data set of what already exists. Now, this is crucial because you're basically stating that AI cannot be original. It doesn't think, it doesn't feel, it matches patterns that previously exists and then it spits out patterns that basically are in accordance to what you ask for. And if this is true in a creative world, you can probably start to connect the dots when it comes to having content or ideas or things that kind of like fall outside the norm. That those things are things that AI cannot ideate, it cannot really create because they haven't been thought of yet. They haven't been created going to that idea of hitting a ceiling with AI. I think that with Jolly Roger, the project that I'm working on, the game that I'm working on, Worship Jolly Roger, go and, you know, wishlist it now on Steam if you haven't so far. But um, while we work internally on these things, I try AI in many different ways because I want to know what I can get from this tool and I wanna make sure that I'm not missing out on anything. So I don't wanna be hypocrite and just basically not use the things that I'm talking about. I wanna make sure that I use it thoroughly so I can basically come to you guys informed. So I have used AI, I still use AI for a bunch of different things. And one of the things that I tried was basically getting concept art from AI to see what happens, right? And it needs to be concept art that fits the game, that fits the theme of the game. And I've tried a bunch of different things. And sometimes you find something and it looks really cool and when he does, it's like, wow, I didn't, didn't expect that. That was pretty cool. However, nothing is amazing. It's just good. For me, it's very hard to kind of like, like accept that as passable when I'm trying to create something amazing, right? So when I go ahead and then on the other side of things, talk with a concept artist and basically tell them what I have in my head, all of these things, and I give them as much detail as possible. And he goes, cool, 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 over a meeting. Then he goes ahead and start adding his own spin on my ideas, right? What I found is that the end result is something that he amazes me. He kind of baffles me. He make, makes me feel like, wow, now I have even more ideas than I had originally because I'm getting more than I expected. And therefore I created something or we created something that was bigger than any of us. And that's the, I think the mix, uh, the, the soup, uh, that basically most creative great projects have. For all those gamers out there that are watching this right now, if you played Ghost of Tsushima, right? Or if you played God of War when you first came out, um, you know, uh, Death Stranding right now that is came, came, came out just now, the, the second one. You realize when you play a game like that, that a lot of the things that those games have haven't been really done before, especially with Death Stranding, right? So those things are things that somebody human, in this case Hideo Kojima, thought about it long and hard in order to make sure that it's as different from anything out there as possible. So you basically, when you get that, that controller in your hands and you're playing it, it feels fresh, it feels unique, it feels awesome. 
I don't know anybody creative that doesn't feel that way about whatever they're creating. They want to create something that it's the most unique thing that you've ever seen. If you don't start with that in mind from the get-go, then you failed already because you're just copying somebody else's thing. And I think this is what AI does best. If you want something that has been done before, like somebody else, then you resort to AI because you just want it maybe a little bit better or like a, bit, a little bit changed, then it's fine enough. But if you want something truly unique, I think that human touch is still and undefeated because you have to imagine worlds that haven't been imagined. Now, you could say, that us as humans we take inspiration from other sources as well and we basically create something else from other sources because no one idea is truly original we always inspired by other things which we could say is similar to ai however we kind of gather those sources and we make something different as a result is a creative outlet that basically doesn't have to match one-to-one -one, but you need to gather inspiration from different sources you need to live you need to experience in order to draw all those personal touches into your work and the best work out there is always part of a human experience that basically created something else in return i've lived through this and i got into this epiphany and i got this idea and therefore i want to create this other thing in order to express myself into this other medium and this is normally how things work AI is not quite there. AI doesn't have epiphanies and inspiration in order to create something unique. They can just take from previous sources of things, people brilliant that actually made something amazing in order to basically build something that maybe kind of like caters to you. If I take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, then do it. So those are the differences that I see in when it comes to the limitations in that roof that AI cannot surpass. Now, I don't know if we're going to get to a place where AI is going to start ideating and creative and all these other things, but it's hard to imagine, right? Because like the whole premise of an LLM is to basically take a lot of information and then basically gather it and then spew out something unique. So how can AI create something that hasn't been done before with the information that basically had previous I don't know, it takes a massive leap for me mentally to imagine that to be happening. And if it happens, I don't think it's gonna be in anytime soon. However, AI, it is kind of changing incredibly fast. So you never know. And I understand the people that say you need to keep up with it because AI is moving so fast and you never know what's gonna happen in the future. However, like I think the people that actually are rooting for AI and basically rooting for the human side of things to basically be ousted, it's kind of sad if you think about it. Even if there, that were to happen, really sad to think that there's going to be a point in time where those traits that I just expressed in this video about you know feeling inspired, wanting to express yourself, wanting to make the audience feel something, pulling on the feelings of the audience, doesn't matter if it's horror or love, like those things kind of being ousted and being created by somebody else that is not human immediately makes you feel like there's not a connection. I don't think I would feel that sense of inspiration because I know that it came from a machine, it came from algorithms, and therefore I don't think I could take anything much from it because I don't feel connected with the person because uh, it doesn't have two arms, a brain, like two legs and all that stuff. But the aspiration that we have as humans to become like somebody else that are amazing at the, what they do, is what makes it unique and what connects us in a way, right? We've been like this as humans for the longest time. Doesn't matter if it's Michael Jordan or, you know, Lewis Hamilton or, you know, whoever. Like, we aspire to be a certain thing, a certain person, because that's basically how we can daydream about the future. If you start going too hard on this layer of AI, it does everything. I think we're going to lose that inspiration you know, or that aspiration as well, which I think ultimately kind of kills that humanity that we have inside. Plus, I do think that we as humans for the longest time, even cavemen, we have been kind of feeling the need to express ourselves. So I think that is innate within us to actually want to be able to create and to, want to be able to actually express ourselves. And I don't think we're ever going to lose that. I think that that's just going to change with AI. We're going to be able to maybe do it faster, but we are always going to create that connection, that human connection that we have. Now, the things that AI cannot replace, I do think is going to be collaboration, emotion, intuition, risk taking, I think is a big one. And ultimately, I think that's why like games, animation and storytelling still needs to be 
on people's hearts from the get-go in order to be able to make it more human. So how can AI animation look more human? By having humans involved to make sure that we feel that connection and we pull on those heartstrings that we want to do because only humans can understand other humans as best as we possibly can. I don't think AI will ever will. So to conclude, the question is not how to make AI more human. I think it's more like how do we stay human while using AI tools? Because ultimately, tools don't make great art, people do. And that is all I had for you guys this week. So if you enjoyed it, give it a like, drop a comment, let me know what you think about AI, how you feel about AI right now. And until the next video, stay well, stay safe, peace.